Hi guys, Spud Cubs here with a little bit of a follow-up to one of my recent videos, the addressing the negativity in my recent uh, content uh, video. The part of that video I want to address is simply the wheels, the spiel about wheels, uh, the, the wheel spiel, if you will. Now, uh, the part about this I want to address is that I had this little car, right? I built this little race car and I thought I'll make it the fastest, lightest, the most aerodynamic little car possible. And it'll go extremely fast and then I'll mount guns and missiles on it and it'll shoot things and it'll be basically like my little rapid combat hydrofoil except a rapid combat car you know that's what I wanted it ended up looking like an f1 car uh, but it went like seven meters a second it went extremely slowly I had no idea why I had assumed maybe wheels had gotten some huge nerf I had assumed maybe wheels just didn't work on small vehicles because of the system they had I remembered I had created a PvP mod a long time ago, Spud Mod, that made a bunch of small vehicles. And they worked. The, the wheels didn't impede them. In fact, they, they all went relatively fast, around 20 meters per second each. They were all slightly bigger than this, though. Excuse me. And, you know, I, it, it really got me thinking, because I, I posted that video. I said, you know, I have no idea why the wheels are doing this. I can't figure it out. And uh, some people... Uh, we're suggesting a, a traction. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't have enough traction uh, or friction. I mean to say, I said no, no, no. As you, as you saw in the video where I built the the first car, I put it all the way to one. And uh, user none your business said, you know, I have a fairly heavy tank that uh, you know in the current patch still goes fifty to sixty meters per second, and Tokyo drifts around. And I thought that's awesome, but why can't I do that? And I thought it's a fairly heavy tank. My vehicles in, the, in Spud Mod were fairly large. Fairly heavy tank, goes 50 to 60 meters per second. All of the units in, let's say, Ashes of the Empire are fairly large compared to the ones I like to build. I like to build extremely small compared to uh, most FTD uh, uh, creators, I guess, uh, to say. And then user, YouTube user Alex suggested, hey, maybe you need more weight on the vehicle. Uh, because maybe you're not able to get enough inertia to overcome the drag of the environment is what the conversation kind of ended as. And it was like a light bulb going off. I was like, oh my God, yeah, you know what? That's the answer right there. I'm thinking, you know, none of your business's tank goes fast. All these spud mod vehicles go faster than this thing. My, my main battle tank goes faster and I, I just assumed it's because it has more wheels, it has tracks. But I tested it. I tested it. I tested wheels don't do it at all. In fact, it is purely weight because, okay, we build aerodynamic cars on Earth in like, the, like this one looks like an F1 car, right? In the F1 races, we build really aerodynamic, really lightweight cars because our atmosphere is generally very thin uh, or compared to from the depths, at least. It's very thin, right? The limiting factor in speed on Earth for our, our super fast cars at, at, at this point is, you know, the weight of the car and more importantly, the drag of the car to, you know, to, to some extent. Because, you know, we have such light vehicles, we just zip around over the place with such, such powerful engines. But in meter, there is a, there is a problem. Because the atmosphere is so thick in from the depths on the planet meter, it's like throwing a paper airplane through a swimming pool. We can make it super, super lightweight and super, zero, super aerodynamic, right? But, it's, but aerodynamics is even more of an important issue than on Earth, than in real life. See, because the atmosphere is so much thicker. The, the air is like water and the water is like syrup. The atmosphere is so much thicker, and you can you can tell because you get any plane, any airship, anything, and you cut your throttle, you will die and stop right in the air. Any missiles, any any bullets, they just kind of stop in the air because of how much air resistance there is. So, like again, it's like throwing a paper airplane through a swimming pool, making such a light car. And so putting weight on it, you know, it's like throwing a, a, a metal or a lead airplane through a swimming pool. It won't stop. It'll keep going. It'll keep going for a while. And it's like, even though we're putting so much force behind the car with the wheels, the drag is just stopping it. So if you add more mass to the car, 
the drag will affect its speed less because more mass means you have to have more force being applied to produce uh, you know one meter per second uh, difference in speed acceleration to accelerate the more weight you have the harder it is to accelerate and drag accelerates us in the opposite direction you know it stops us from accelerating us it decelerates us so adding weight makes us accelerate now later on oh, mouse come over here mouse later on in, in this I add kind of like wings I need to skip over to it really quick. There we go. I add heavy armor wings on the side, and here's to block the... Here, let me show you. This is just to block up the drag. So if I add any more wheels to this, then the drag doesn't change. And so the, I guess you could say, the control variable in here is the drag, and the experimental uh, variable here is the amount of thrust I am applying to the vehicle. And I, I'm just trying to see if wheels do anything to the speed. See, so I've blocked up drag. The drag's the same. It's not changing. I increase the amount of wheels. Look, we go from 27 to 27. It did not change, and we basically doubled the amount of wheels we have, right? Now, note how, note how we're going 27 now that we have tons of heavy armor on the car, and... <laughs> we still have four wheels, and we can still get to that speed, but it's because of the heavy armor giving us that momentum, giving us that inertia that we're able to get to that speed. Otherwise, the air resistance just slows us down too much. There is such a low terminal velocity in near, even for, for falling, actually. And uh, just, I'm not going to move the video totally into this right now. I might make a separate video on this, but... I start messing with the physics, and it got me into this whole, like, physics binge. Because you can change, as you can see on the screen right now in the game configuration, you can change every little, I guess, factor in how vehicles interact with the environment on, uh, on Planet Neater and from the depths. And skipping ahead, um, I didn't mess with that immediately. I kept a very light vehicle, and I just turned the drag down. This is with drag just turned down. I'm going 32 meters a second, no heavy armor. And honestly, this is really fun. I, I'll, I'll post my uh, physics settings. You know, I'll just make a new video on it. But um, <laughs> I'm playing the campaign now with custom uh, physics settings because it's just, it's, it's awesome. It's great. Uh, like if 0.4 drag, if you do like a 0.4 uh, drag on both water and air, let me not get into this back to the car point being limiting factor in its speed was air resistance the entire time it had nothing to do with the wheels and i tested it specifically here and you see the results that the wheels had no effect on its speed it was purely the air resistance and at this point um just to show you guys i i i kept the low drag settings and this is the rapid combat hydrofoil without the there's a new one by the way but this is the old one and double the speed on it. I take out the jets later. Let me just skip over to it. I take out the jets later. The VTOL still works. Boy, the VTOL works. And boy, does it go fast. It's extremely unstable with such a low drag because, you know, you know, less resistance. It's just kind of flying through the air. It's not like a... so. It, it doesn't have as much control like you're swimming. It's like you're just shooting. It's, it's like it's actually flying like a jet. It feels like a jet, too. It really does. And I feel like I need to actually put more wings on the thing. Because, uh, gosh, it's fun. But I, I gotta say, with uh, the physics change, uh, you can stall out. <laughs> you, can, you can reach way too high atmosphere way too fast. Because, you know, space is only a kilometer high. You know, you, you can't go 20,000 feet in the air. You can only go 3,000 feet, and then you have zero air it's just zero gravity even why do they make gravity end where air does make air end and then gravity extend quite a quite height uh, this just doesn't make sense to me make another kilometer of just no, zero air but like gravity so a true spaceship has to really get up there you know it has to get past that little barrier anyway um i mean that'd be cool for space fighters anyway uh there is a setting i like with uh, air drag and water drag being at like 0.1 or 0.2 and uh, increasing buoyancy a little bit, and increasing mass just slightly. 
And I don't like uh, increasing propulsion. I, I just leave propulsion at like one. Um, it's already, you know, mass and propulsion, you can just leave that on, on its own because all you're wanting to modify is the uh, drag. You know, you don't have to modify every single variable because, you know, they depend on each other. They work with each other, you know. Um, it all it all works together. So, I don't know, if, if you keep it at, at very, very low drag at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you get really realistic settings, really fun, real awesome settings like this where you can fly around and have a blast. Uh, but then all the airships in Nidor kind of fall out of the sky. Some of the surface vessels kind of sink. Um, actually, most of the Onyx watch stay afloat pretty well. I tested it. The Eerie, the, the Atlas and the Moray. But if you get to 0.4 drag, you don't mess with the mass. Keep the mass at one. Uh, keep propulsion at like one. Because neither defaults, actually, propulsion is 1.25, and so is buoyancy, I believe. I like to keep buoyancy at 1.5. Um, don't mess with mass. Keep propulsion at 1, not 1.25, just 1. Because um, I like to discourage the cheese of deadly blades and using power to keep you in the air. If you just naturally use helium pumps or, um, you know, like the Atlas has a lot of balloons. If you go to 0.4 air drag and 0.4 water drag, things act semi-realistic. But the Atlas and Erie and Moray, they can all still fly and, you know, survive in the air. So I'll, I'll post my full, uh, you know, propulsion notes, I guess. Uh, I can actually put them into the description of this video. How about them apples? Anyway, guys, this has been Spud Cubs with just a little follow-up to uh, the, the car. You know, why the car didn't work. Uh, in short, in summary, TLDR. Uh, too long didn't watch, actually. Uh... Excuse me, I might be coming down to the cold. I got a new puppy and she just licks, she licks everything. She's so adorable. I call her Boo. And she's, she's a little black chihuahua. She's adorable. Oh, she's, oh, she's adorable. Uh, I'm going to make a, some vlogs about her. But uh, just following up, uh, too long, didn't watch. It has nothing to do with wheels. It is about uh, weight and inertia. You need an, enough inertia on your vehicles to counteract the force of air resistance and dra uh, of drag on your vehicle. So heavier vehicles go faster on Neater because it's a soup. That's basically it. Anyway, guys, this has been Spud Cubs. Please subscribe if you like me. Please like if you like me and share the video if you like me. <laughs> Have a buoyant day.